Welcome to Aero 210 Lesson 3, Design, Synthesis, and Sizing. These are the lesson outcomes for this lesson. Please hit escape and take a moment to review these outcomes. And then when you're ready to resume, just hit the slideshow button again. These are the topics that we'll cover today. So how do we get started? Uh, well, an aircraft design problem is a classic Ildefon problem. At the start, we don't know enough to do the analysis that we need to do to solve the problem. So uh, we have to make some assumptions, do some analysis, and then use the results to make better assumptions uh, and, and better design. So typically, to solve this ill-defined problem, we will create a concept, a design concept, that we think will solve the problem. And then we'll use our analysis methodology to evaluate that concept. Then we'll change the concept to try to make it better and do the analysis to see if it got better or not. If it got better, keep going in that direction. If it didn't, go some other direction. Our goal with this design problem, this AATF 1987 design study, is to try to reduce the cost of the F-22 so that uh, had we gone that direction, we could have built more of them. This information is interesting from a historical point of view, but it's also perhaps very useful to the people that are designing the successor to the F-22. We know that cost uh, is proportional to size and weight in general. And in fact, if you look at Table 8.5 in uh, the textbook, it says that jet fighters weigh more or less $2,000 a pound. So if we can reduce weight, we think we can reduce the cost of an alternative to the F-22. But to do that, we have to know how the design decisions that we make and the requirements that we have influence the size of our aircraft. We need to know the size so we can know the cost, and we need to uh, know the cost and how it changes with changes to the design so we know which way to go to optimize our design. The sizing equation is based on a very simple uh, equality that the whole aircraft must uh, be equal to the sum of the weights of each of the parts. We take these weights and we divide by the wing area of the aircraft to get a parameter that we can use to describe a class of aircraft rather than a single airplane. And we come up with this equation on the bottom of wing loadings. The wing loading of the whole aircraft, the takeoff weight divided by the wing area, is equal to the sum of the portion of the wing loading that's due to the airframe, the portion that's due to the engine, the portion due to the payload, and the portion due to the fuel. If we solve that for the wing area, we get this expression. Uh, in terms of the weight of the payload, which is specified by the RFP, and then these wing loading uh, values the total wing loading and then the wing loading portions to the various aircraft parts, which uh, we will have to determine in some way. One way to determine some of those values is to look at histor uh, history and historical aircraft. And so here's a plot that shows values of wing loading for whole aircraft versus thrust to weight ratio, which we'll also use in uh, getting one of these values. And uh, for a whole s group of aircraft from uh, various historical periods, all of these are supersonic aircraft, and uh, so they represent a similar uh, type um, fighter or uh, strike aircraft uh, to the one that we're designing. Now, I said we were going to use thrust to weight ratio as well. If you look at the equation on the right, you see that to get the wing loading portion due to the engine, we take the engine's thrust-to-weight ratio, which is a measure of its technology, 
and uh, we actually invert that so it's weight over thrust for the engine and then multiply it by the thrust to weight ratio and the wing loading from this chart so if we pick a particular uh, aircraft that we think our aircraft would be like and have similar characteristics we take those two values from the chart and multiply by a technology level which uh, for 2010 technology level we think about uh, 10 to 1 is a good thrust to weight ratio and uh, multiply those three numbers together to get the value for um, engine wing loading portion. Now another term in the equation is the airframe uh, wing loading portion and uh, the experts in that area would tell you that that depends a lot on the shape of the aircraft. So how do you know what shape? Uh, you're going to have to draw something. You're going to have to start somewhere. And one way, way to start is to look at history and say, well, you know, this airplane is going to replace the F-111, or this airplane has to be a fighter-type airplane, and so look at similar uh, airplanes and shape your design initially like that. Make a start, then do some analysis, and then make changes to make it better. And that's how we approach aircraft. Okay, now let's consider an example. Let's assume that uh, an aircraft is being designed and a uh, design point wing loading of 80 pounds per square foot is chosen. The aircraft thrust, thrust to weight ratio is chosen to be 0.6 and the level of technology for the particular kind of engine being used gives an engine thrust to weight ratio of 6. Assume that the aircraft uh, has a payload weight requirement with a design of 4,000 pounds, that the airframe weight fraction is 0.3 and the mission fuel fraction is 0.4. Let's find the size takeoff wing area, S. We use our sizing equation for this because we can calculate all the parameters in the equation and solve for S. First off, the wing loading, as we said, was chosen as 80. The airframe wing loading portion is just the airframe weight fraction multiplied by that wing loading, 0.3 times 80 pounds per square foot, to give you 24 pounds per square foot. The engine wing loading portion is the engine thrust to weight ratio inverted, so it's the engine weight to thrust ratio multiplied by the design point wing loading and the design point thrust to weight ratio. So 1 over 6 times 0.6 thrust to weight ratio, 80 pounds per square foot wing loading gives us 8 pounds per square foot as the wing loading portion for the engine. Then the uh, fuel, the mission fuel wing loading portion is the mission fuel fraction which we're given multiplied by the chosen wing loading of 80 pounds per square foot. So 0.4 times 80 pounds per square foot gives us 32 pounds per square foot. So that gives us uh, the following solution. We know that our payload requirement is 4,000 pounds. We substitute in the other numbers we just calculated or were given. And when we perform the calculation, we solve for a sized wing area of 250 square feet. Uh, typically this starts with the back of the envelope uh, drawing an idea in your head that you put on paper and communicate to your partner or whatever um, and maybe you and your partner sit and uh, brainstorm it's also called ideation where you say well here's some ideas you know uh, how do we uh, save on weight well what if we have no control surfaces or what if we use uh, um, fixed landing gear instead of retractable landing gear, etc., etc. And you uh, just uh, go back and forth uh, m coming up with ideas and putting them down on a piece of paper. You don't ever say, no, no, that's a bad idea, because you never know what idea is going to trigger uh, either in the person who came with, up with it or in somebody else in the group another idea that actually is going to be the best idea of all. So. Uh, draw from everything you know and uh, let the ideas flow. Now if you're working on this problem over several days sometimes it's helpful to go jogging or take a nap or something like that. Please don't do that in class.
to let your conscious mind relax so your subconscious can work on the problem and make those connections with all the information you know in your head. So, use this process. Create a, uh, a new design, a new concept to start the analysis. Here's an example. Kelly Johnson, the designer of the P-38 and a number of other aircraft that uh, we know well, the F-104, the SR-71, uh, when they were first considering the problem of building a twin-engine uh, fighter interceptor aircraft, uh, jotted down all of these uh, ideas for different configurations of the way to use two engines to power a single-seat fighter. And you can tell that uh, configuration number four is the one they finally went with. Uh, interestingly enough, configuration five uh, was also built uh, by another company as uh, the F-82. Look at the ceiling of the design classroom. The aircraft on display there are placed there so that you can uh, see all the different ways that various aircraft designers have solved various aircraft design problems. If you do a little research about the uh, missions of the different aircraft, you can start making connections in your brain between the shapes that uh, different aircraft have and the missions they were designed for and the kinds of performance they were designed to achieve. And uh, Plus, there's uh, all kinds of clever ideas about how to solve problems, different ways of approaching identical problems. So gather all the information you can from history, including the uh, models on display.